Hey everyone. So back when it was announced that the X-Men film series was going to try to adapt the Dark Phoenix storyline again, following the failed attempt in X-Men The Last Stand, I was a little indifferent to the news. Not that I was against the idea in principle, but it just felt too soon since this was chronologically one film after X-Men Apocalypse. However, I have enjoyed, even loved, most of the movies in the X-Men franchise, so I decided to give this one a shot. Will Dark Phoenix be the movie that makes up for X-Men The Last Stand's mistakes, or will it leave audiences counting down the days until the X-Men make their appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Let's find out. Welcome to Short and to the Point, where I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back! No place to hide. No place to run. No place to run. The mutant aid. The mutant aid has now begun. X-Men! Our story begins in 1975, where we learn how the young Jean Grey, played by Summer Fontana, met Professor Charles Xavier, played by James McAvoy. Of course, it's nothing like how it was depicted in X-Men The Last Stand, but it was a decent scene in its own right, as the two characters discuss the nature of mutant powers and how one uses them. We then flash forward to 1992, where we find a group of astronauts stranded in space because a mysterious anomaly that is approaching Earth has disabled their shuttle. When news of this reaches the public, Charles dispatches the X-Men to save the astronauts. Let me just say that this sequence was my favorite part of the movie. Everything from the uniqueness of the X-Men operating in public as a rescue team, to how the group uses their powers to contribute to the rescue, to how Mystique, played by Jennifer Lawrence, and Charles clashed over the risks needed to safely retrieve the astronauts made for a tense sequence. It all culminates with Jean, now played by Sophie Turner, absorbing the anomaly into her body to save everyone, and despite how the action should have killed her, she manages to survive. This should be a cause for celebration, but the power soon begins to warp Jean's mind, putting everyone she loves and cares for at risk. So when it comes to Dark Phoenix, well on one hand, it's a very watchable film. It features a suitably creepy atmosphere, the directing is competent, and the acting is fine. Sure, some actors put in a bit more effort than others, but I'd be lying if I said the performances were phoned in. Really, the biggest issue with this movie was the writing. It did absolutely no one any favors. To start off, the continuity in this movie is borderline dreadful. I know the X-Men series has played fast and loose with continuity before, but never to this magnitude. For example, in X-Men Apocalypse, Jean blatantly uses what is supposed to be her Phoenix abilities to kill Apocalypse. But this movie acts as another origin for them. If the power that Jean used in Apocalypse is supposed to be something different, it's not made clear in Dark Phoenix as nothing from the former movie is directly or even vaguely referenced. Another frustrating thing about the lousy continuity was how Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender, was inexplicably given land to settle by the government despite how he nearly tore the Earth apart in X-Men Apocalypse. It's never explained why, and again, the aforementioned nearly tearing the world apart business is not brought up. These aren't the kind of plot points that one can just write off or expect the audience to fill in the gaps, especially when so much could have been done with them. And even if you did disregard the continuity issues, Dark Phoenix does not work on its own either. The best way to sum it up is a bunch of good ideas that never made it past the outlining stages. What's worse is that like X-Men The Last Stand, there are too many of these ideas crammed into the film, which not only takes time away from the titular Dark Phoenix story, but it also makes the other characters come across as morons because none of the decisions they make have time to be properly developed and feel like they are happening just for the sake of drama. For example, Mystique and Beast, played by Nicholas Salt, believe that Charles is developing an ego from leading the X-Men and hold him responsible for the bulk of the problems that occur in this story despite the fact that he acts rather reasonable and gives good points for why he is doing what he does, making Mystique and Beast come across as if they are overreacting, especially Beast later on. Furthermore, after a certain tragedy befalls the X-Men because of what Jean did, some characters think that she should be killed like Magneto, while others want to help her such as Cyclops, played by Ty Sheridan. 
This should be a recipe for a tense story, but it's resolved almost as quickly as it's brought up, with none of the possible consequences that could result from the characters clashing coming to pass. Speaking of quick resolutions, the Dark Phoenix material is ridiculously short, amounting to a few scenes of Jean causing trouble and struggling to keep control that seem to be building up to something, but it cops out before the climax takes place. It doesn't help that most of the second half of the story is dedicated to what the other characters want to do with Jean over Jean herself. I haven't even begun to talk about Jessica Chastain's character, which I don't have time to do, but long story short, her role as a corrupting influence in Jean's life is another good idea with no time to be developed, and it even contributes to how the movie cops out on the Dark Phoenix stuff. Overall, Dark Phoenix is just a mess. The cast and crew tried their best, but the poor writing kept me from getting invested in the story. The continuity issues are lazy, and nothing the characters do is fleshed out or earned, with most of said characters just being in the movie because the plot says so. The fact that this is the second time they have tried to do a Dark Phoenix story and screwed it up still made the experience all the more frustrating. I am giving this movie 5 wasted concepts out of a possible 10, and unless you are a big fan of the X-Men film series, I do not recommend it for theatrical viewing. This has been Short and To The Point, and I review movies in 5 minutes or less! or your money back. Now to excuse me, I'm going to go give X-Men First Class a rewatch and wonder where this series could have gone if it actually took its time to develop some of its story ideas. I will see you all next time. Bye.